Welcome everyone. Welcome to IFMA Toronto and South Central Ontario's October web series. My name is Sarah Clare. I'm your Vice President of Programming and Education and by day I proudly work for Infrastructure Ontario. I'm your virtual moderator today. Thank you for tuning in. We welcome all of our members and non-members or as I like to say future members. Today's presentation is being recorded and will be posted to the IFMA YouTube channel afterwards. Thank you to the IFMA team for making this presentation possible, especially to Kay Pays and Maria Stemberg and to Lindsay Angus at JLL. We are excited to partner with Ram and Stu from the JLL team on how to reimagine the next normal. Ram and Stu will guide us through the increasingly pivotal role that our facility management industry continues to play. Today's presentation is approximately 35 minutes long, leaving room for an active Q&A discussion. Before I conduct our speaker introductions, I would like to remind everyone that we have our upcoming virtual AGM this Thursday, November the 12th at 5 p.m. You can find registration details on our LinkedIn page. Next, I would like to pause for a safety moment. So today's safety moment comes from a personal experience while my husband and I recently took some time off around Thanksgiving. We went up to the cottage to help close some things down for the outdoor activities, such as the boat, which you would take to the boat lodge and remove out of the water. So we decided to take it for a final spin around the lake before bringing the boat into the launch itself to be put away. When we were in eyesight of the boat launch, the boat stopped working. We were lucky that someone was in eyesight to come and bring us to shore, but it is a reminder of the importance of having emergency supplies in your boat in the, ca in the case that something does go wrong. We're obviously all very focused on the response to COVID, but this is a lesson learned. Whenever you're leaving the house, you should make sure you're doing safety checks, whether it's your car or your boat. So I would like to leave you with that. Now I will move on to our speaker introductions. I'm gonna start with Ram. Ram is a managing director at JLL Consulting. He has more than 15 years of experience managing complex multi-regional and global real estate strategy projects for large footprint corporate occupiers, real estate developers and public sector organizations. His subject matter expertise includes real estate portfolio strategy, portfolio optimization, organization design, managed services, outsourcing strategy, workplace strategy, real estate technology, real estate data analytics, and change management. Prior to his role at Deloitte, Ram helped build and lead consulting teams for JLL in Canada and Asia Pacific. He's also worked for, with consulting teams at Cushman and Wakefield, advising clients on corporate real estate strategy and at a management consulting boutique acquired by KPMG, where he advised clients in the areas of mergers and acquisition and post-merger integration. Thank you, Ram, for joining us today. Stu. Stu is the Global Integrated Facility Management Lead on the RBC account at JLL. Stu is responsible for the delivery of facility management operations across a portfolio of approximately 20 million square feet. This is inclusive of retail and premium office real estate. Based in Toronto, Stu oversees a team of 150 professionals in facilities management, technicians and technical services specialists, so that CMMS, critical environments, energy, sustainability, and health and safety. Stu is a strong believer in driving an engaged and positive working environment. Stu's team works side by side with the client every day looking for opportunities for innovation, customer service experience, technology, effective cost management, operational efficiencies, proactive versus reactive culture, and overcoming the inevitable daily challenges of retail and office environments. With that, I will now hand over the presentation to Ram. Perfect. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarah, for that very kind introduction. And uh, we look forward to sharing some of what we're seeing uh, through today's discussion with the group that we have on call. Um, we live in historic times right now. Um, we are headed into the last two months of uh, a year that will be etched in our memories. And we've seen sudden transformation of how and where work happens. And right now, as uh, JLL Consulting, we're working with uh, some of the biggest occupiers of space in Canada. Um, over the last six months or so, we've um, we worked with something like 50 companies uh, around um, North America and topics on, on the front of COVID-19 response, re-entry, reactivating work environments, enabling how people work from home. And increasingly, we're seeing the shift towards reimagining what the future looks like. Uh, questions that have been uh, top of mind include things like, what does the future workplace look like? what will the office represent in the future? And importantly, as purveyors of the experience, 
uh, what do CRE, corporate real estate teams and FM do? Um, we have been at the front and center of this response. Uh, and in today's discussion, we planned some really interesting content to share. Um, I will walk through the first segment to introduce some of the key concepts, trends, major themes impacting CRE FM teams around the world. Um, and then my colleagues too will walk us through the second segment to caption some of the practical impacts to FM and what the future of FM looks like. Uh, what you're seeing on screen right now is, is, a, is a caption of all the themes that we're seeing. Um, what's interesting is, of course, uh, being part of a large global company like JLL, um, we have seen the end-to-end -end impact of this pandemic across the world. It's been eye-opening. You know, JLL manages something like uh, 5 billion square feet uh, across the world. Uh, we have offices in every major location. Uh, we have offices in Wuhan, for example. And we have lived the first stages of the pandemic as the world lived it. Um, and now we are seeing trends shape the future of real estate portfolios globally. Uh, the role of the real estate function has been elevated. Uh, we're seeing that the pandemic has been a catalyst for change. Economies are experiencing paradigm shifts and fundamental changes in how people work, socialize, and connect. Uh, this has meant organizations are having to rethink across three spheres, the work, worker, and the workplace. Uh, the how and the where of work is changing. And therefore, the role of the office is under significant scrutiny right now. Uh, we expect that future workplaces will be driven by experience. And this is a topic that we will dwell on uh, deeply in today's discussion. Uh, the role of real estate will be pivotal in shaping the future of work and experience in the next normal. And these trends, of course, translate to the fact that uh, real estate and FM uh, functional areas must evolve. The role of the FM will be magnified in the future. We are already seeing global organizations adapt to this accelerated pace of change. And in the second half of today's presentation, Stu will share some of our insights from Asia Pacific as well. So very interesting conversation today. Um, organizations must of course act now to set up for success in the future. We were experiencing uh, some of these disruptive trends pre-pandemic. The pandemic has accelerated the trends. Uh, technology adoption and change uh, took months or years previously. These have happened almost overnight. Uh, remote work at the scale that we are seeing right now was never thought possible. Uh, and companies are having to question everything. Uh, this has meant chaos, but in this chaos lies opportunity. Uh, for organization, uh, navigating the pandemic has been a, a massive challenge. Uh, think about driving on a sunny day versus driving at night. For C-suite executives uh, and teams around the world, managing the crisis has been like driving in the night. There are no precedents, there are no benchmarks. And to stretch that analogy a little bit more, uh, the headlights have been unclear as well. Uh, so the long-term impacts of the pandemic are unknown and parking at the side of the road is not an option. So companies have realized this and they've kind of taken steps to secure the future. For us in the real estate industry, uh, the pandemic has helped elevate our position within organizations. Uh, CRE and FM teams perhaps previously never had a seat at the table in major organizational decision making. Uh, right now, CRE and FM teams have been front and center on the battlegrounds managing the impact of this pandemic. Um, historically, we have made it look easy. And as we move forward, the role of CRE and FM will be even more magnified. It, it always helps to understand uh, the journey organizations have taken through the pandemic. Uh, you may have seen this journey, journey map uh, JLL published uh, sometime early March. Uh, so I'll keep it brief, but going from left to right on this chart, in the red, the first stage of the pandemic was felt in Canada early March. Uh, at that point, uh, the focus was on ensuring employee health and safety, making buildings, workplaces safe, um, and ensuring that those who needed to be in the workplace could could be in the workplace safely. Then we moved into the second stage of the pandemic, uh, what's highlighted in gray on the slide. Uh, Re-entry planning took hold. Uh, it almost took a life of its own and companies needed to review carefully how to invite people back to the workplace. Who should come back? What do they come back to? What are physical changes required to the workplace? Uh, questions around HVAC and air quality. Um, these were top of mind for everyone. Uh, and of course, as real estate leaders, 
we were heavily engaged to deliver safe workplace and peace of mind to those returning and now highlighted as the next normal uh, we are entering into a new phase uh, we are seeing the focus shift companies are now increasingly looking at what the future of work is and will be redefining their businesses and strategies for what appears to be a longer than expected disruption for many companies and planning for that next normal for for us this has been the most telling illustration um beyond the numbers it showcases um why companies are thinking about the future uh this this graphic of course shows the percentage of people expected to return to the workplace over time uh, there are several factors influencing things um aspects such as the nature of work government regulations timing of vaccines ensuring employee safety etc and these percentages are broad averages um but it's clear that uh, businesses are accepting that the covid journey will be longer than expected so if you look at the slide Uh, we have most companies returning something like 20 25% of the workforce back to the office by end of the year those dates have been fluid most companies are now kind of in the march territory but what's been interesting is if only 15 20% of your workforce return to the workplace the stuff highlighted in red on the graph um, then the remaining 85% or more will continue to work remotely uh, at least in the short to medium term um this has meant that companies have needed to shift their focus to ensuring people are enabled regardless of where they work um simultaneously the work from home experiment has been very successful by many accounts and companies are therefore evaluating whether a significant percentage of their staff can work flexibly for the long term this of course means a significant redefinition of how and where work happens um also from from our experience companies that have returned 5 to 10% of staff uh, have employees reporting that they don't feel the same vibrancy in the workplace they felt before um people returning to the workplace note that it's a hospital like environment a very few people on the floor you need to wear a mask and you're still doing zoom calls uh, companies have therefore seen people choose the work from home option um why is this the case because experience like i mentioned in the workplace is not what it used to be experience will be a topic we dwell on a little more deeply in this presentation and will be a major driver for the future experience we see will shape the future and the purpose of the office will be to facilitate employee experience to ensure business productivity and outcome and we are already hearing major moves companies are making and have made so let's look at some of those themes we have seen a spate of headlines over the last few months uh what you're seeing on the slide here is an illustration um all of this is in flux changes are announced uh, what feels like virtually every hour um for example reddit made an announcement about work from home options today uh, microsoft has changed their stance um and yes we have seen some very interesting headlines but are these headlines trend lines we need to look a little bit deeper to uncover the trends uh companies like uh, for example twitter siemens even national insurance have announced major permanent remote work options for their people uh, likewise facebook fujitsu others have made significant moves to remote work uh, and on the other hand some companies have announced measures to reduce footprint bp for example have said that they are looking at 50 plus percentage reduction in their footprint um and all this is fueled by the fact that work from home has been a success for many companies uh therefore it's not surprising that uh, companies are looking at right sizing their space um and they are settling on what we like to call as a middle ground work from home for some some of the time work from the office some of the time and people have the flexibility to choose uh, the consensus is on this hybrid model and uh, this brings us to the question how much companies need in terms of space footprint and what does that space do uh, these are fundamental questions and to answer these questions companies are rethink rethinking organizational dna uh, the work worker and workplace so as companies reimagine for the future uh, they need to do so across these three organizational building blocks the work the worker and the workplace um or in other words the what the who and the where uh, 
companies will need to consider the what, which is what will workflows look like in the future? How has the work from home experiment influenced work patterns? Uh, will these hold for the long term? Uh, and linked to this, who, which is to say uh, companies need to assess their talent strategies. Uh, how can we enable alternate talent models? Um, how will traditional employment models change in the future? And therefore, finally, where will people actually work? Where should the work get done? What is the mix between physical and digital environments? Um, how do we ensure productivity across these uh, different platforms? On the topic of where this is not a question of office or remote, rather, like I mentioned on the previous slide, it's a question of um, a balance between the office and remote. As we mentioned, companies are already recognizing that uh, hybrid solutions make sense, and which is why we believe that the future is hybrid. So let's look a little bit deeper in terms of what this hybrid solution may look like in the future. Uh, think of the future not as a single destination. Uh, the future workplace is not a single destination, but an interconnected network of places. Uh, the office, the home, third place environments like co-working spaces and the virtual space. Uh, here's why we believe the future of work will be hybrid. Uh, talent strategies in the future may look very different. People have benefited right now from uh, new ways of working, working from home. And surveys indicate that they have enjoyed this flexibility. Uh, most surveys, in fact, suggest that half, half of the people surveyed uh, feel more productive working from home. Uh, almost feel more productive than what they felt before. And people have enjoyed the fact that they don't need to commute, they can spend more time with family, they can focus on health and many other good things. Uh, but people have also missed the ability to effectively collaborate with colleagues. Um, we also recognize that we built relationships and social capital pre-pandemic. Uh, for example, Sarah and I know us, uh, you know, uh, each other before this pandemic started and we could organize this webinar. Um, we are leveraging some of that social capital right now. Um, how long will this continue? How long can we continue leveraging historic social capital? Will we run out of it? Uh, moreover, these questions are about long-term, there are questions about long-term effects of work from home as well. Uh, there's mental health impacts to people. Uh, therefore, instead of focusing on this 100% office versus 100% work from home discussion, organizations are gravitating to a middle of ground, a hybrid network of places. Uh, in a practical sense, a hybrid network could pan out something like this. Uh, you have a variety of options as has been des described on this slide. Uh, you could choose from them based on what you need to accomplish. For individual work, you could choose to work from home. Uh, Pre-pandemic, working from the office was a default. Post-pandemic, maybe work from home becomes the default. Um, and for work that requires collaboration face-to-face, -face, you may use office space or you may use co-working space that's close to your home. If we wish to collaborate with a colleague impromptu, we could use digital collaboration tools. Um, the future workplace offerings, of course, will need to evolve as well. And they likely come with some combination of physical space applications, uh, digital space applications and mixed reality applications as well. Uh, you're likely going to have people working from home and from the office uh, and virtually simultaneously. So you'll need uh, a very strong digital footprint. Um, this is great at an individual level because it offers people flexibility and choice. Uh, but for companies, it presents a challenge. The challenge, of course, is that the future workplaces will need to cater to different things than they did before. The purpose of the office will change. Uh, companies are having to rethink not only what the office stands for, but also their footprint itself. Uh, the days of taking a floor plan and immediately plotting workstations, those are behind us. Uh, the mix of office space will change, and likely we will have office spaces very closely aligned with what work needs to be accomplished. Uh, the office will become a point of social connection. And the reason this presents a challenge is physical environments, buildings, have been emblematic of culture, brand, and values. Um, the workplace has always been a melting pot. It brought people together. It brought, brought teams together. Imagine working in a world where people come into the workplace only one or two days a week. Uh, the workplace will need to be designed in such a world to provide deeply immersive experience 
to leave lasting impressions. Um, and moreover, if people choose to work from anywhere and have that choice, uh, why will they choose to come into the office? These are questions that companies will need to grapple with. And we as real estate leaders have the opportunity to provide the solution. Uh, so the role, the function, the purpose of the office will change in the future. So let's look at some of the leading trends on that front. Uh, we're, we're already seeing that future workplaces will have uh, many pulls and will need to support uh, at times competing organizational objectives at the same time. Um, companies will need to be smarter with how they invest in office space and office and office spaces in turn will need to support many things, things like uh, collaboration, connection, uh, learning. Learning will become a massive, massive area going forwards. Uh, the future belongs to not the know-it-all organization. It belongs to the learn-it-all organization. Uh, learning eventually leads to growth. It leads to innovation and much more. Uh, the future workplace will be defined, therefore, by all of these elements. Uh, these elements together constitute, in our view, experience. And experiences will need to be immersive. They'll need to be inclusive. The workplace experience in the future will need to convey brand. It will need to convey culture it'll need to leave a lasting impact on people's hearts and minds. And this will be a massive, massive shift in the way workplaces are designed in the future. And you know, we therefore believe that the future is all about experience. Uh, experience will define the future workplace for employees. The face of this experience is us, the real estate organizations. In many cases, FM teams, like I'm sure Stu can vouch for, uh, the role of real estate and workplace will need to evolve to support experience in a very prominent way. Uh, the role of real estate as, it pro as providers and curators of experience will be critical. Uh, to illustrate this further, it's clear that you know, real estate is no longer a commodity, it's a service. Um, like coffee on this slide, we've gone from being a commodity to a product to a service offering. Uh, space as a service has become industry standard. And as we transition to the future, the next evolution of real estate and the workplace is experience. Uh, why is this the case? Because experience will be the differentiator. Experience will convey brand. It will convey and curate culture. Uh, just as we keep going back to our favorite coffee shops uh, for consistency, for quality, for product, for service, uh, the future workplaces will need to blend consistency, quality, product, and service, and package experiences. Create experiences that ensure people keep coming back. And as purveyors of experience, uh, we, real estate leaders and FM teams, will be tasked with creating meaningful moments that matter across the digital, physical, and emotional realms for our people. Uh, so as we reimagine the future workplace, CRE and FM teams around the world, we are certain will be tasked by organizations and leaders to create these meaningful experiences. Uh, companies will need to create, like I mentioned, moments that matter um, under the physical realm uh, health and well-being take center stage. People will need physical spaces that provide healthy, safe uh, experiences that allow them to uh, do their work, do their best work, but also connect and learn and socialize. The future is, of course, all about digital. Technology will play a major role in this process. And the ability to be seamless, frictionless, and integrated uh, across that ecosystem of technology will be very critical. And Stu will touch on some of the practical implications to FM in, in, in the second half of this meeting. Um, the future is all about emotional as well. Uh, mental health has become a major topic uh, and going forward, it'll, it'll gain even more prominence. Um, we expect that the pandemic will cast a long shadow and the workplace will be a point where people will assemble not just to do work, but also to meet their friends and colleagues. Uh, workplace joy the ability to provide people with upliftment, engagement, uh, rejuvenation, a sense of belonging, all of these things will become extremely important going forward. And companies will need to redefine and reimagine what experience means. Organizations will also need to create a high quality employee experience regardless of where people work. Uh, this will mean looking at uh, the in-office experience, of course, but also the work from home experience uh, and the remote work experience. That is to say, regardless of where you work from, work experience becomes important. 
uh, CRE and FM teams will have a magnified role in this case, uh, providing safe and supported workplaces, allowing people to have peace of mind when they come into work, uh, ensuring that people are empowered and engaged to do their best work, ensuring that environments are productive um, and they support what people need. IT platforms will also need to be seamless to ensure that people are able to work from anywhere. Um, you know, things like uh, Zoom and other platforms will need to become so seamless that it, it doesn't matter where you work from, it allows you to do what you want to do. Um, and finally, people will need to feel fulfilled and happy when they come into workplace as well. Uh, and therefore, like we mentioned, the concept of workplace joy is taking, uh, taking hold very quickly. Uh, to accomplish all of this, CRE and FM teams will need to think beyond the traditional B2B business to business relationships um, to more B2C constructs. And what we mean by this is FM contracts, for example, are between service provider and client, uh, but FM delivery takes place from human being to human being. How will this change in the future? How will companies create immersive employee experiences? And what is that next normal role of CRE and FM in curating those immersive experiences? Um, it's very interesting content coming ahead. Uh, I'll hand over to Stu uh, to walk us through some of that. Thank you, Ram. And just a quick sound check here, if you give me the thumbs up that you, you do hear me. Perfect, thanks guys. So thanks, Ram. Great piece there, and uh, just a wonderful opportunity to be speaking here with uh, with this IFMA crew. As companies do reimagine the future, the one thing we do know is the importance around the employee experience. I think Ram has highlighted that uh, significantly through the previous slides. And no pressure, but where that actually falls um, and the importance of that falls uh, the center of the change will be with the FM community. So while companies look to um, focus on attracting and retaining talent uh, and driving productivity in the workforce, it really is going to be the FM community that must look at ways to operationalize the future of the employee experience in the workplace. And this gets, this gets super complicated. I mean, as Ram has just explained to us, we're no longer just dealing with uh, an office, or a, a standard office environment. We're now dealing with this hybrid approach to the workplace. We're dealing with the, the workplace at home. We're dealing with the office environments. And then we're dealing with this concept of the remote environment as well, or these collaboration hubs. Now illustrated on this side is, is the various elements of the employee experience that FMs will need to ingrain themselves in, will need to educate themselves in and have a strong understanding in. It's everything from how to bring a brand experience to life through things like service and amenities and wellness programs. Uh, wellness programs we will actually highlight as a very important piece of the future over to technology and how we leverage technology and understand how to use the data to drive our operations and to drive the uh, to drive savings and the customer experience as well and all the way over to social responsibility um, and some very important topics on the top of everybody's minds today such as sustainability But let's focus on uh, a key element of the future of the workplace, and that's around the health and well-being ecosystem. Now, this is, this is not new information. Uh, this is not a new topic. We've been talking about fitness and nutrition and those sorts of areas in the world of facility management for, for a number of years, because it's socially been a, a, uh, a hot topic. But let's look at, you know, a basic example, um, table stakes, if you will, of just cleaning and how the importance around cleaning um, has, has escalated in, in the past eight months. Our role as FMs 
all of your roles as FMs, is to gain trust back into the workplace uh, during and after this pandemic. Cleaning is the most important thing that we need to be focused on. So the importance around it is, is, is critical. Costs have escalated in that field and overall anxiety of our customers or the tenants within our spaces have escalated around cleaning. So we as FMs need to make sure in the future that we do have those customer, uh, customer experience systems in place, making sure that escalations or challenges experienced around a topic like cleaning are tackled and followed up and closed out with our, our tenants, our clients as soon as possible. Because remember, at the end of the day, you're responsible for gaining that trust back into the workplace. So those are, those are really the table stakes areas. Now let's open up this huge bucket of other areas or other elements of the uh, well-being ecosystem that are going to be uh, part of our FM lives. Everything from temperature screening to COVID testing to health coaching, inclusive of mental health, health fairs, well-being training, virtual fitness classes, wellness kits, uh, and all of the, the PPE that comes along with those wellness kits. These are changing areas, and these are all areas that we are going to have to be educated in because they are going to be, if not already, part of our new normal. And to make matters a little more complex, as Ram was talking about, let's, let's focus on the skills that we will need to manage with inside this, this new environment. We've already talked about the fact that the workplace environment is now this complex hybrid model of people using their, their homes, people using offices and people using these remote or collaborative hubs, if you will, to interweave with and conduct their daily work. Well, the individuals are also changing who are weaving into these different workspaces. We have our permanent employees who will be weaving in and out of that hybrid, uh, that hybrid grouping of workspaces. We have an increased trend in temporary contractors and freelancers uh, that are more project driven or, or skilled, uh, skill driven. And then we have the new digital age of, of the robots, if you would, you would, or automation. All of these individuals have very different needs within the workplace. And it's going to take the FM a significant amount of focus around skills to be able to manage and succeed within this environment. So some of the skills that are, are critical in, in, in my mind is things like emotional intelligence. With all these different individuals with very specific needs within the workplace, we need the FM community to be able to interact with them and um, deliver to their individual needs. Let's talk about agility as well. The ability to change our world, and, and Ram referenced this earlier in his slides, our world is changing every day and it is only going to change every day. We need individuals to make sure that you have the ability to change, that you're constantly trying to stay at the front of change and it's exciting, the idea of, of change for you. And lastly, touch on uh, the idea around service orientation. My, my background is in hotels and hospitality management. Um, at the end of the day, the FM needs to focus on that service culture, that service mentality, people helping people, people, FMs wanting to take ownership of both the workplace experience and their client experience within that workspace 
as well. So the next generation of FM uh, will be focused in, in three key areas. The first area around people. I just touched on that. It is about a passion to serve others and then the idea of this uh, ability to be educated and understand the wellness aspect of the employee experience. And that's a big aspect. We saw that, that one graph outlining all the different areas that we will be exposed to with that lens. Then over to place, and that's understanding what makes the worker of today thrive in the workplace and how the workplace functions so that we as FMs can ensure its experience is seamless. And then to technology, one of the most important aspects of the future. And that's leveraging technology to better service the workplace, to reduce these escalating costs that are only going to continue to grow, and then fine tune the employee experience. So as Ram has referred to um, the beginning of his slides, companies we are already seeing in, in the world of JLL are growing in their in, a employee experience program offerings. The reality is already here. These are some these are some snapshots of companies out in the world today that are already tiering the workplace experience services that they provide. Things like workplace screening, healthcare services, well-being training, all of those elements are being ingrained into the employee experience. So my word of advice to this group on, on this call today um, is if you are in a global company or on a global account, make sure that you are reaching out to your counterparts in the FM community, especially in regions like Asia Pacific. Asia Pacific, that region is months ahead of us in, in the cycle of this, this pandemic. They are the ones that are already experiencing um, how they are playing a role in these different areas, whether it be workplace screening or, or health resources. Your colleagues in, in those regions will be able to support you and give you a good understanding of the impact of things to come so that you can be ready for that change and be ahead of the curve of what we will see in North America. Ram, I will pass it back over to you. Thank you, thank you, Stu. Um, with, with everything that Stu just described, um, it's clear that change needs to happen. Uh, and in many, in many ways, change needs to happen right now. Um, companies can do a lot to set themselves up for success and the time to reimagine is now. But how does one, how does one reimagine the future? Uh, this requires thinking across multiple dimensions. Um, as a quick summary, this is the framework that we have been using as JLL to help companies reimagine the future. Um, organizations will need to be adaptive. Uh, change is not constant, it is continuous now. And companies will need to be adaptive to that change. They'll also need to be resilient. Uh, we've had the pandemic and a black swan event, but this event should teach us to be more resilient in the future. I think there's also recognition that we as organizations, individuals, companies will need to act more sustainably and responsibly going forward. And this needs to translate at an enterprise level as well. Um, all of this of course means uh, change and change to um, business, change to talent and people strategies, change to how workplace strategies are formulated in the future and change of course to CRE strategies. Um, not just footprint, but like Stu mentioned, it's also the organization that supports the footprint. Uh, the role of FM and what that role looks like in the future will also change. Uh, and all of this will need to be on the backbone of a strong digital architecture. 
Um, digital spine is something that uh, we speak about when we are organizing some of this with our clients. So translating this framework to tangible aspects that uh, companies can address uh, today. Uh, companies have the opportunity to reimagine across community, well-being, experience, and resiliency. Uh, companies can accelerate digital transformation and drive innovation, uh, and they can do so while supporting the community and connectivity. Uh, the pandemic has had massive impact on people's lives, and companies must continue the focus on health and well-being that they have initiated through the pandemic. Um, companies will, of course, need to evaluate what that future hybrid model looks like and what does it mean in the context of their own organization and how will things like workforce, workforce preferences influence them. And finally, therefore, they'll need to consider what the purpose of the workplace is and its role in shaping the future. I'll conclude here by saying that uh, we expect uh, the boldest companies to win. Companies that make uh, courageous bets uh, during crisis events typically come out as winners at the other end. Uh, and as we mentioned, uh, real estate will have a massive role to play in this. Uh, buildings have been symbols. They have been physical manifestations of what organizations stood for. And CRE FM teams have been purveyors of that information. Um, the crisis presents an important inflection point. It's an acceleration towards the next normal. It is clear that uh, there's no returning to the old normal. And big winners will be companies that make bold decisions. Uh, those who act courageously right now can gain significant competitive advantage. Uh, I'll conclude by saying that uh, it is time to rethink the future. It is time to look for opportunity in this crisis. Uh, we live in historic times. We are charting history. It's time for organizations to reimagine, but it's also time for us as individuals to reimagine our own roles. If not now, then when? And if not you, then who? It's time for uh, CRE and FM teams to seize this moment and help organizations set up for future success. Uh, so I'll pause there, Sarah, and back to you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. I hope everyone enjoyed that presentation. Um, we're going to kick off now into our Q&A period. So any questions that have been burning throughout this uh, presentation here, don't hesitate to utilize your chat function, which you'll see at the bottom of the screen. Um, send me a message. But we have some initial questions um, to start with to get everyone's creative juices flowing. So. Um, and Ram, Stu, I'll let you kind of um, decide who wants to answer these. Um, right now, there's a lot of focus on HVAC and air quality. What do you see as being the next hot topic from a technical standpoint for FMs? Do you want to? Ram, I can, uh, I can jump on that one. <laughs> Go yeah, uh, and, and good question wherever that did come out from, because uh, let's face it, we, we as an industry have not figured out the HVAC side of things yet as a, as a consistent approach. I mean, there is a lot of theory out there about what should be done and what shouldn't be done. So while it's great to think about what are the next things we're going to be focused on, Truly, I think this day and age, it really is still uh, a major focus of ours is to sort out the right way to tackle HVAC, uh, to support a health and safety work environment. And then those other key areas as well that I touched on in, in my section, especially around cleaning, right? Um, which is, I, I would say cleaning and HVAC are, are, are the two hottest topics right now. There is massive costs associated with both those areas um, and any small change um, I mean to the portfolio that uh, that I work on for example when you're dealing with 20 million square feet um, a small change like a uh, an upgrade and filter for example we're not just talking a few dollars we're talking a small change becomes millions of dollars um, cleaning side of things, disinfection, 
right? That's probably resonating with a lot of you on the phone. There is no cheap way to disinfect a space, to elevate that, that level of janitorial service, which frankly we, we need right now. So, you know, the, the topic that's hot right now, and I think the next topic is going to be looking at what are the options to help, you know, those two categories specifically in, for example, reducing frequencies in janitorial so that we can still maintain a level of disinfection, but reduce the, the, the frequencies in people having to go disinfect spaces um, through the use of, of janitorial technologies. Um, so let's let's crush through those, and then I'm sure there'll be a, a lot more on the horizon after those. Not not to labor this too much, Sarah, but uh, I have a slightly different spin on this question. Uh, CRE and FM have been dealing with this HVAC topic, and I believe that uh, you know Stu highlighted this new wheel of CRE FM role. One of the roles that is not highlighted there is psychologist. I, I believe that uh, the underlying reason why we're getting these HVAC air quality questions is COVID-19 is actually challenged psychological contracts. Uh, we believe that the building will keep us safe. And that unwritten psychological contract has been put to test, right? And FM teams can help bridge that gap, build trust back. Trust has been this kind of intangible amorphous area for companies and trust relationships with people have been very, very important for companies to maintain. And guess what? We as real estate and workplace are right there front and center, making it practical and tangible. So elevate this HVAC topic to become psychological contracts and you have retention and talent retention come into play. And this becomes a very, very critical topic. Certainly. Thank you both for that. Very appreciated. I have a question here um, from Reg McLean. So, um, from Ram's early slide on working from home versus office trends through 2021, it noted that this is for the office workplace. Do you have any thoughts on what managing spaces that have not and likely will not see any reductions in staffing? So logistics production, um, what are your predictions for that? I, I think um, many, so I'll, I'll just take a step back and give a little bit of background. Uh, so there's this board of innovation survey uh, that talks about the fact that we have entered into an age of low-touch economy. Uh, low-touch economy basically being where human-to-human -human contract is being reduced and companies that have been positioned well um, to perform in this economy are those that have succeeded. So Board of Innovation surveyed something like 700 companies and 15% of them have done well, 85% have struggled. The 15% that have done well are the ones that are positioned for the future. So what are those companies? And I'll, I'll now land this plane. It links back to the question that's been asked, right? So logistics, supply chain have been very critical. And we've seen companies in that space grow. And they've had to hire talent. They've had to train people in many cases through remote functions. So there's going to be growth in this area. Um, maintaining safety is going to be very critical going forwards. And ensuring that people have what it takes to deliver all of that work will be extremely critical going forward. So very, very interesting question. There's this tremendous focus on office, but there are other asset classes within real estate that that will perform well. Industrial is one of them. Certainly. Thank you for that. All right. Uh, my next question for you is, um, given that JLL has a Wuhan office, as you mentioned, what findings have you been most surprised from learning in other countries further ahead in the second wave and other lessons learned? Stu, you want to you want to take first shot at that? Yep, I can drive that. I mean, it's um, it's been a, a positive experience. There's no doubt about that. When clients are looking to what their office setups are supposed to look like, that's where we've leveraged those experiences from from the JLL uh, head office. I remember a number of months after we went on lockdown and, and we were all squirreled away in our homes, we were seeing the stories from the JLL corporate um, Wuhan site. 
Um, and you could see already what is in North America in our spaces in the office. They had already devised and developed social distancing, decals, um, just the overall workspace setup. Um, so they've done a lot of that, that legwork for us. And it's been, um, uh, it's been key to tap into that, not necessarily reinvent the wheel, um, but learnings from what worked and what didn't. Hence, you know, my, my last point from, from my slides around uh, those of you who are with global companies, get a contact over in APAC, Asia Pacific. Find out somebody there in the FM community um, and just, just have those conversations about how they are seeing their role developing and changing. Uh, because it will give you great foresight on what will most likely be here. Certainly. Or you could phone a friend at JLL. Am I right? <laughs> give me a shout. <laughs> and, and I'll connect you with somebody. <laughs> Perfect. That's the answer. Thank you, Stu. Um, all righty. We have a question here from Buwan Sharma. Hi, Buwan. Um, Buwan had some questions around, um, you know, this kind of, no one knows timelines, obviously. No one has a crystal ball, unfortunately, on what the future holds for us. Um, and we're talking about reimagining and how we're going to implement the future state when we don't know timelines. But um, are we going to be in this reimagining loop for a long time? Like what, like obviously um, projections are changing all of the time. Um, looking at the projection slide that um, you had here today was showing um, what it's going to look like up until July, 2021. Originally people were talking about everyone going back to the office in January, 2021. And now um, it seems to be more common like a summer 2021 um how do you see um that fms are going to like how do fms kind of um pivot with that and we're constantly changing timelines what's the best way in managing expectations or have you been successful i, I can i can give some context uh, sarah on that and, and Stuart invite you to add as well um so just as um, just as a little bit of background right if we if we take if we look at the journey overall that companies have gone through, um, you had the disaster event, then companies went into business continuity planning and they expected to come out of business continuity planning, but that hasn't happened. The business continuity plans have become the normal. And like the question that, that's been posed, um, it's uncertain how long this is gonna last. So what companies are trying to do right now is narrow the cone of uncertainty. So what are things, what are actions that they will take regardless of what, what the future looks like is what companies are trying to determine. Um, and then some of the news headlines that we are hearing are, are the result of that. Companies narrowing the cone of uncertainty and saying, these are actions that we've got to take. There's also this realization that um, the work from home experiment um, is no longer an experiment. Right? We've been at it now six, eight months. Uh, we can't call it an experiment anymore. Um, we have data to show that people have uh, worked reasonably well, teams have succeeded. Yes, there are issues. So how do you manage that going forward? So there's this narrowing cone of uncertainty that people are looking at as opposed to very specific solutions. Um, for CRE and FM, like I've said, um, it doesn't feel like it in the moment, but we are writing history and everyone has a real estate question. So it's a great time to be a CRE or FM person right now is my view. Stu? Yeah, and only thing to add on to that is for, for this group on, on this call, uh, stretch yourself, right? Like we are going to be, it, it's going to be a long road. It's gonna constantly change. Um, it's gonna constantly delay all of those things. I, we're in that now. Stretch yourself, right? Think, think out of the box about how you're delivering service today versus how you could deliver it tomorrow because we've got the time now to figure this out. Um, was talking earlier on about janitorial as, as an example to, uh, to give you here. Be out there tapping on the shoulders of every company that is, is putting forward um, technologies around disinfection, right? 
spend time there because those are the things that are going to make you successful in your, your role, your role today. That's great feedback. Thank you. Um, and I see we're getting very close to the top of the hour. So I'm going to ask one more question, which hopefully you both can answer in approximately a minute and a half. So from Jeff Anderson, um, we have a question here, and this is kind of getting back to comfort um, and the importance of giving comfort to staff and companies and returning back to the office. But do you expect an uptick in buildings needing to display or brand well certifications or other certifications? Um, have we seen a ramp up in applications for that as well? I, I think I think absolutely. Right. So anything that allows companies to convey to people in a transparent way that they have done what they could to ensure safety will be extremely important. So um, I, I think if there is a there's certification program that companies can go through, yeah, why not? Absolutely. Uh, there are other methods. Uh, we've recently worked with a large uh, Canadian organization across 400 locations. Uh, they invited back a certain percentage of their staff. Uh, very successful exercise, involved a lot of planning. Uh, the biggest lesson that I would share is communication and transparency. Uh, they ensured that people had everything they needed to feel safe and secure. Uh, they actually told people what they did to ensure the space is safe. Uh, they provided people with choice um, to, to come into the office if they needed to or work from home if they needed to. And it's highly transparent process. So people knew what was coming their way. Um, so I would say that consistent, transparent messaging and anything that allows people to have that peace of mind will be helpful. Thank you, Ram. I appreciate it. Um, all righty. Well, we're going to wrap there. Thank you so much for everyone for your active discussion. Really appreciate it. And thank you to Stu and Ram from the JLL team for today's awesome presentation, active discussion. We need continued support like this from the FM community in order to continue to deliver excellent programming during these unusual times. We'll post today's recording to our YouTube channel as always. And thank you again for joining and participating. If you have any ideas that you would like to share in terms of content for a future webinar, please reach out to us through our social media outlets. We'd love to hear from you. Lastly, if from Toronto and South Central Ontario would like to thank all of you that are working on the front lines as essential workers. We couldn't get through this time without you. Take care, stay healthy, and keep in touch. Take care, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.